Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Ultimate Apocalypse casts this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a 2 versus 2 on Rock Claw Foothills. On the southern side, as the Chaos Space Marines, we've got the Good King. And we've got Grid Panther playing as the Imperial Guard. On the northern side, playing as the Dark Elder, we've got the Blast Furnace. And we have got me playing as the Space Marines. So this is indeed another game on the playtest build, where previous game we saw just a huge... 4 versus 4 on an epic size map and seeing all the big end game units and all that stuff. But today we're going to have a look at the smaller games and see how the new playtest kind of affects the smaller and more intermediate kind of games and stuff. Now play as Space Marines purely because that's that's my, that's my go-to really in a game as wide and expanding as Ultimate Apocalypse. Something simple like the Space Marines, that's what my brain can wrap around. I'm quite excited to cast this game because obviously there's some changes and stuff and I do quite like what they've done with the Space Marines here. In the past, take, for example, got the Humble Cultist Squad. When they're armed with their grenade launchers in the olden days of Ultimate Apocalypse, I mean, one small the squad of cultists can go straight up towards a squad of Space Marines with their grenade launchers, absolutely they murder them. Fire. But in this game, uh, with the changes to how the infantry kind of work out, Space Marines don't tend to die nearly as quickly as they used to. So that's what I quite like, because you know, that makes sense. You know, if, you are, if you're armed in... That mighty Sermite Mark IV or whatever Mark armor coming over. And just in my brain, law wise, it's a lot more appealing to me. Anyway, I'm being a bit cheeky, throwing down a quick heavy bottle to it right next to the strategic point that the Imperial Guard wants to go for. Conscripts are attempting to stab up my servitors good and proper. Scouts are attempting to keep them at bay. And we are just going to see if we can get this down. But sadly, just in the nick of time, Conscripts do manage to fend those servitors off. There's some Hellions. Going toe to toe with the Chaos Space Marines while getting stabbed and sliced by the large mass of them. But now these cultists attempting to do exactly the same with the critical location, just going to ignore everyone, see if they can finish it off. Conscripts and fully qualified guardsmen coming into the ranks as well. Tying these guys up as best they can. One Hellion falls as I attempt to put down another heavy bolt to turret. Thankfully, the Torch Slave does give it the perk and prod of the Dark Eldar, so it will start building itself up. Runs a little bit slower than you would with three servitors, but can't stop it from building by killing the builders now. And the conscripts and guardsmen aren't known for their building bashing potential. Cultists just calm and zen as they focus on the critical location down here. Second squad of Chaos Space Marines moving on forward. Opening fire against Hellions. Hellions do quite a lot of damage in close combat, so not wanting to get involved in any way, shape or form there. As a brother captain also is joining the fight. Trying to defend off these guys from my heavy bolts to it. Got a couple of horses. Oh, there's two here. Where's the third one? Oh, the third one's just fallen behind. Probably just admiring the view, smelling the roses and whatnot. They're just going to completely ignore what's going on here. And see what mischief and mayhem they can cause on the back lines. Hellion's not so good at taking the damage. Quite good at giving it. Much like most Dark Eldar stuff. Gonna die very quickly when they're on the receiving end of a slap or two. Also, it has been finished. It's now making quick work of these cultists. Brother Captain goes toe to toe with a scout friend up against the Chaos Space Marines. A mean customer he is. Will fall back within the altar range of that turret. Keep him safe. Horse first tactical marines. He's got to get to punch them as best they can. Struggling a little bit, to be honest. I know that I, I, I just said, hey, they're going to do a really good job at staying alive. Maybe not against horses. Because the horses are quite big. Last of the Hellions standing. Will fall back there just in the nick of time. Before he gets killed. And getting a friend in there as well. Just for good stuff. Brother Captain overstaying his welcome as those Chaos Space Marines reinforce themselves. In fact, oh dear, oh dear. Falling... Down most unceremoniously as he retreats. Attempted Tower of Loving Turret placed by Blast Furnace. That probably won't go up, all things considered. I think we've killed the horses. Yep, we've killed the horses. So that's something. Double tactical space marines moving on down. Under that supporting fire of that Bolt Turret. And he's going to jump in. As we work in tandem, focus on the squishy Imperial Guard forces first and foremost. Got the commas are in their ranks. 
And a Chaos Lord also going to come over. He's going to be quite a mean bean when he starts engaging these guys. Glorious hand-to-hand -hand combat. Elliot again surviving with just one model. Quite nice stuff. Tower of Loving has been finished. And got some souped up Mandrakes just charging on in. Slicing and dicing the Chaos Space Marines, but not really doing all that well against them. They are armed with combat axes by the looks of things. Chaos Lord keen to keep these guys on the back foot. Not sure if there's been a squad wipe on my Space Marines. Or at least on one of the squads yet. It does seem like it. There's only one squad left. And while it was a valiant attempt at holding the centre, as I've said one, twice, a bajillion million times on a map like this, holding the centre is really key to playing in the long game. Which is why I was very de uh, keen on keeping a bottle turret being placed down there. But sadly, we've just not been able to hold it. We'll fall back to the heavy cover. Elian's going to come over to give us some assistance. It's not a winnable battle, so we will just stay back. Let the Hellions take a bit more damage there. Marine dear, oh dear, very unfortunate. While things are quietening down on this Curse Lord is beating up this Tower of Loving, let's have a look at the economies. 153 and 49 and 110 and 30, compared to 213 and 40 and 108 and 19. Have a look from the Curse perspective for a bit. It's going to go for Purge of the Weak, Target Finders, Frag Grenades, Power Swords, all the good stuff. Also going to get some more Chaos Space Marines. He has got a machine pit as well for any kind of machine-like play that they want to go for. I'm attempting to go forward. I am arming myself with some plasma guns. As I mean, while well, you're obviously in Tier 2, you're in Tier 2 as well, or at the very least, Tier 2 slash 3. You will be in the same thing as I can tell because of the uh, disco lights. And I'm in Tier 2 because of the plasma guns. That's the plan, baby. Go for plasma guns. Go for the upgraded Space Marines. All that front line. Plasma pistols on the Spiring Champions as well. Remarkably good against the heavy infantry. And at some point, we. Oh, right, I've completely ignored what was going on here, but apparently at some point, the Dark Elder decided to come on over and uh, capture both the relics. <laughs> well done, me, for my wonderful map awareness. Also, got some mines here, which is absolutely annihilating these guardsmen. Very unfortunate. Got the Scourges coming over. And dear, oh dear, just very unfortunate placement for these guardsmen. Absolutely annihilated. Dark Eldar using their map-wide morale damage to break his Chaos Space Marines. Also some corrosive acid to reduce their armor. Chaos Lord. Kind of like not in, the, in, in a good place at the moment. Having to run through that acid and being slain as he ran away. Much like the uh, company master of Chapter Brother, or whatever you call him, from earlier on. They're going to be able to reclaim their relics over yonder, I imagine. Not a huge loss, but still quite the pain all the same. Space Marines holding that line. Taking out listening post. The assistance of the Scourges. We'll attempt to try and capture this strategic point, but then deciding there's too much going on here. Got that Vindicator coming in. Just, just... <laughs> Saying F you to this one guy in particular. Shooting him down at no man's business. Blast explosions everywhere. Covering the retreat of these Chaos Space Marines. Currently they don't have enough plasma guns. Right? Not compared to ours. I mean, do we have... Yeah, we've got access to... Potentially for two. Now it's got their frag grenades in there as well. Vindicator goes down. As a... Chimera Assault Tank. Also armed with Heavy Flamers as well. Making the way down on Urbet. A bit of a stalemate at the moment, but although we are being flanked, which is not a very happy situation for us. One tank is being stabbed apart there. Go have some Dark Lances on these Scourges. Can upgrade the whole squad of them if they so choose. Blast going for a bit of a, mi a mix and match of their weaponry. Elian's now going to jump in as a regular old Chimera comes forward. And Chaos Space Marine's been whittled down to smaller numbers by the Tactical Marines. My plan here, essentially, 
wanted to beef these boys up as much as possible. I've gone for... Essentially, every time I've got spare money, I go for the War Gear Bionics. Which is exactly the same as what the Car Space Marines are doing. Also, I have a squad on the way. Raiders with some Dark Eldari in there. Or some Jukari, even. Not to blaspheme against the, the Dark Ones there. Icon Bearer inside the squadrons for the Car Space Marines. Do act as a apothecary for them. So we'll make them last a lot longer. And we're still not seeing... I mean, we've seen the listing post being killed over here, but... Kind of had to turn their attention away from recapping that, I imagine. So much stuff going on over here. If they turn their attention away from defending this side, they will lose a lot. Being supported by these guys as well, doing our space means quite a lot of good here. We'll fall back into the heavy cover. Also got some heavy weapons teams setting up an opening fire. Havoc's doing a lot of damage, especially with our auto cannons. We are trying to get some apothecaries just to add to our tankiness here. Breaking down our models. Quick, sharpish. We're all being broken on one squad. Also got the assault tank coming around the flanks. And I do quite, I do, I do quite like the Commissar Cadets coming on in. I mean, they're not, they, they used to be armed, I think, with Power Fists way back when, but no, these now are just regular old Commissars, well, just Cadets. Very inspirational seeing these guys come on forward. They do have a proper Commissar joining them. Now, can, does the Commissar have the execution ability when joining these guys? Can you execute a trainee commissar if they start running in battle? That's my question. Oh, plenty of these spiky death spikes. As as the, the clue is in their name. Not sure if these guys do damage to people around them. But I mean, they do look quite intimidating. Whether they're just a wall. Hard to say, really. I've checked their tooltips earlier on today. Doesn't really say much. Man's been a Tempest on high. Got some Devastator Marines coming in, looking for some multi-melters. Take on those tanks that are constantly on our sides. Grid Panther doing a really good job at flanking. And being that factor that helps the Chaos Space Marines push people back. I've got a sizable amount of heavy infantry going on here. And plenty of supporting fire from these heavy weapons teams. Using long range scanner to assist the Chaos Space Marines in seeing these schedules. And the schedules are really the main problem with the Chaos Space Marines at the moment. Raider jumping on in the middle. Doing a fair bit of morale damage. In fact, double jumping on those Raiders. And then the global morale breaking. Four cadets. They came in looking for gold. And all they found was the cold hard steel of the Jukari. Of some firepower going on over here. The land speed of Tempest attempting to break down that listing burst with crack missiles. Well, this is a very well defended area. Plenty of firepower. And the Space Marines are moving into position, but as they move, there's a lot of time that they could be taking damage. But look how much health that they've got going on here. They've got an Apothecary. They've got their War Gear Bionics upgrades. I do believe that the other squad has also got some apothecaries in there, so it's all kind of... In fact, I don't actually know if the apothecaries that are bought inside the squads are just for that squad individually, or whether they overlap their healing, but... Managed to survive for a little bit. Before them being forced back as these guys activate their Purge the Weak ability, massively increasing their damage up. But the cadets are still alive. Gosh darn it, look at them. Point blank refusing to die. <laughs> I like the, yeah, the, uh, the honourable calls that they, they throw out. Be free of free men. Keep on keeping on. As long as we die in glory, that's the main thing. Grenade's been thrown left, right and centre. And it's just a tug of war going on here. While that's going on, it does seem that the Imperial Guard are now throwing out just all smorgasbord of infantry. See what they can do. 
Unspeeded Temp is still knocking around. Has managed to take down the listening first. He's now focusing on listening first of the Imperial Guard. Missile launches and also cannons. Breaking down their sketch, which are much more fragile. Constant use of that morale breaking global ability from Blast Furnace. Massively reducing the outcoming damage from those Chaos Space Marines. The Bill Guard still not quite taking on this. As I said before, if they take their attention away from assisting in that engagement down over here, then they might lose a vital piece of defensible territory. Imperial Guardsmen just kind of being the meat shield that they were designed to be. Do have a flag with them, which, um, I mean, it, it's aesthetically, it's pretty decent. Nobody as tall as the Icon Bear, is that? I suppose, I mean, what? Space Marines are like eight foot tall, something like that. Our space Marines now moving into position. Again, still these. This guy's being a real problem, but throwing a grenade towards them. I throw grenades just everywhere. Just indiscriminate fragmentation happening. Mighty Talos jumps right on in as a vindicator for me. It trundles its way on over. Heavy weapons teams now repositioning themselves on the front lines. Imperial Guardsmen also placing down some sandbags for defensive reasons. And, I mean, it, it's good for covering the retreat of the Chaos Space Marines. Not gonna lie, but... That's a... It's a bit of a waste there. Vindicator, just firing a warning shot. Just giving them fair warning. In fact, firing two warning shots. Letting everyone know that he's here. Good lord, that's three misses in a row. Are you, who are you firing at, Vindicator? What's your... What, what's your problem? Have the, there we go. Have the targeting cogitators not quite aligned at the moment. Yeah, that is just a really poor performance for a Vindicator. There we go. Fire in the middle. Surely going to hit something eventually. Missile launchers focusing on that Vindicator. And maybe an assault tank on top of the ridge. As this guy, you're breaking the rules. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Heavy weapons teams moving and setting up at the same time. God, if you're going to play a game of Dawn of War, at least follow the rules. Well, I'm sure that's probably a bug. I'm sure there was not an intentional breaking of the game by Gridpan for that. He's got his auto cannon there. Vindicator. Not really committing. I mean, he's dead, but didn't really do that much while he was alive anyway. Yeah, really difficult situation for the southern team here. Making absolutely phenomenal use of this choke point there. We've not been able to break through it at all. Would probably make more sense to go around on this side, but I mean, where's the fun in that? Just look at the amount of damage these boys can take. Once they're fully upgraded, they are just absolute tanks and beasts. Scourge is now in a bit of a vulnerable position. Getting that decap in there. I'm just going to jump straight out of that. Really difficult when you've got a solid front line of Space Marines like this and then the Drukhari in the background just, just basically being dicks, essentially. Now you've got to bring out all your defensive stuff to make sure that we don't push out over here. But then also having to defend from these guys just stabbing and cutting on the flanks. Terrible situation. Now, just to add to our tankiness, we're going to throw down some smoke grenades as well. Just means that we get reduced incoming range damage. Look at this firepower coming in from the Chaos Space Marines. Doesn't matter where we got apothecaries, carriers, doesn't matter where we got smoke. They've got the firepower. Although they are going for a lot of. Oh, they all Havoc Marines. Where are the regular Chaos Space Marines? Oh, they're all Havocs. Okay, fair enough. That would explain why the firepower is quite substantial. Yeah, no plasma guns. I, I assume that there was going to be some plasma guns in this kind of combination. 
Got a Chapman in there to further increase their regeneration. Now on this side, the Dark Eldar are making their way in. The Basilisks joining in, but being blasted up straight away. They're not designed for front-line combat. Phil Guardsmen have got some priests in there. It's got field command, which is going to be quite difficult for the Dark Eldar to take on. That being said, we do have some souped-up racks and awesome scourges with Dark Lances. Currently, no one's in here repairing it. Cast Vindicator coming over. Provide some support, but these guys are all stood in the heavy cover. And hold on a second. Oh, sorry about that. I just had a phone call for a, a job interview. So I had to really quickly take my casting hat off and put my teacher hat back on and pretend. Yep. Oh, yeah, I can answer all your questions right now. <laughs> anyway, well, what on earth is going on? We've got a fight going on over here. A fight going on over there. The field command is, is dying. Trying to get out a Vindicare assassin. Can they actually do it in the nick of time? Does seem like they are able to get one out. He's going to stand the back lines and fire away as, as best he can. As just this wall of Sermite from north and south are just point blank refusing to move on either side. We do have a whirlwind as well, throwing down some rockets as the field command has gone down. Got some very brave conscripts and guardsmen running on forward, seeing if they can kill down these Hellions. Seem to be stuck a little bit. Well, that's what you get for flying on skyboards, I guess. We're pushing on forward, focusing down a listing post as best we can. And the push is real. Of a replacement field command in this little elbow of the map. And we've got some... Was that some artillery coming from, from your side? Who's doing that? Or was that the Murtar team? Is that Murtar team in you? Is that just the anti attack Something was being fired in. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm seeing things properly. Oh, it's the Basilisks, right? Okay. I know what's going on. I have a rough idea. God, sorry, it's, it's so mind, mind bending just going from casting mode to professional job interview mode to then back to casting mode. Yes, Hopefully that'll never happen again. Here we go. Plenty of dead. You can just see where all the, all the fighting's been taking place, really. It's just been happening in this kind of area here. Plenty of plasma guns from the Imperial Guard, but they're dying pretty quickly against this massive artillery. Huge explosions on both sides. Chaos Predator on the front lines being blown up by artillery, and I do believe we've got some sort of melter gun somewhere in here. Why is that a last cannon? It's a last cannon. Twin linked one at that. Remarkably good against infantry. Yep, I imagine in this kind of scenario, artillery is the way forward. After all, any kind, any time a tank comes near the front lines, shot up quite quickly. Artillery can sit round the backside, throw in that DPS in large chunks. Now got a dreadnought, been thrown round the front. Tie up any guys in close combat. Oh, it's got a whole smog spot of Dark Eldar. Pardon me, it's all kicking off now. More beasts in their nines. Striding on forward. Raxa following them in hot pursuit. An Incubus Coven. An Archon in their ranks. And the artillery just blasting everything apart. Verge the weak. Activated to help focus down. These dudes are commanding shouts or a smite or something from the uh, chaplain as an ironclad dreadnought comes in from the flanks. Field guards struggling to hold back. The Dark Eldar losing buildings left, right and centre as some scourges come in to bad the killing blur potentially. Our space screens over here being thrown around left, right and centre. By the Ironclad Dreadnought. And that is... That is that. That is the good king. Gone. And, yeah. So, so Northern Team wins. Hooray. So, yeah. So, I, I, I think that was quite a quite a fun little match. Um, I think it really does... Uh, how would one say? It does demonstrate the uh, changes 
in how uh, the games will run. Smaller games such as these. You know, I mean, in the past, it would have been just a, a case of going all the tanks forever and ever. Amen. And this time, no, I mean, yeah, okay, fair enough. It was a bit of a meat grinder of infantry versus infantry here. But, I mean, no one died super duper quick. It wasn't quite quite like a wipeout. And then we had to like think of like different ways to break that stalemate through the use of flanking uh, units. Also, the Imperial Guard doing exactly the same. In fact, wonderful use of the Chimera assault tanks that we saw earlier. But yeah, yeah. So, so, so. Oh, and we've also got a, a, a rocket just, just caught midair, which is quite fun. So, yeah, nice one. So, cheers, guys, for playing the game with us. And if you want to support the channel, have a look at the old Patreon. One pound a month gets you once a game a week. And there is also a Discord where Discord things happen. Links in the description, as always. I've been Mr. Lanchark. Pleasure's always never chart. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.